We need, we need some masala. So there's all of these safeties set up for it because we learned that the hard way. Some, somebody built one. We didn't build it. They took our stuff and books and built one in Colorado. And just to show you how all the systems are interrelated, this is a good example. They were in an earth ship, an early one that had the early models of all these systems. An old 80-year-old guy was staying with him, one of their fathers or something, and took his teeth out. Uh, they were going for a uh, picnic or something. He took his teeth out to wash them in the lavatory, in the sink, and spaced out, being 80, and uh, left the faucet running. And the, the other people, the younger people, didn't notice. They all got in the car and left, came back, I think, the next day or something. And the sink just stayed running, of course. Uh, it, it drained their cistern into their living room planter, which didn't have an overflow, which flooded their living room. And the pump just kept running and ran down their power. So in other words, they, they run their power and their water and their living room all in one, you know, one teeth cleaning incident. So <laughs> what we learned there was, and it wasn't us because we didn't build it, but still, uh, that was a lawsuit waiting to happen. And so we have everything checked out, like uh, you, if, your pump stay, if your water pump stays running too long, it turns its own circuit off. Uh, if, your, uh, if, if it did, for some reason, keep running, it would simply go on, overflow into the septic, overflow into the botanical cell outside, and overflow on into the outside drain field and never flood your living room. As a result of that, we have every interior botanical cell with an overflow that goes to everything else. So the only way you, you know, you, you're going to go out there, or we did, and, and, and make mistakes uh, to tell you how to evolve the system, and we're still doing it, only it's much more minor mistakes now, and they're, they're, uh, everything about this does work now. There's not many of those kind of incidents happening these days. Uh, so that is the, the uh, basic water system. Anybody got questions on that? Yeah. Because of the, when you put in the conventional leaching field, because you've got this economical poor usage, do they require the same? Yeah, they ignore all of it. And they, so you still have to put the put, drainage side. Yeah, the they just, they, that's their best way of, some of them will calculate with us, but most of them just say, look, it's going to be easiest for everybody if we just ignore your system. We are letting you put it in, but we're going to ignore it and put in ours. In other words, you're, we're basically duplicating a system, but we need the septic tank anyway. Mm -hmm. So all we're duplicating is a drain field, and we just don't, you know, six or $800 for a drain field is a lot cheaper than fighting the authorities and sure. trying to prove and whatever. Okay. Yeah? On the drain field cisterns, at some point, is there ever a repair replacement that needs to be done and what's involved? In We've never had to do... Uh, in, in a few cases, in the older models, we've had to go in and clean out systems, <coughs> but not much. Like the newer models with the plastic cisterns, they, you know, they don't even need, they don't even need cleaning out. The, the, the old systems had a funkier roof. The filters would get dirty quicker. The cisterns would get dirty quicker. Now the clean metal roofs, the filters need to be cleaned, you know, three or four times a year at the most. The cisterns never need clean. Uh, it's kind of it's kind of working pretty smooth right right now. All aspects of this whole integrated water system, which again, the look at the electricity needed by this. That's why we stay away from the the uh, light filters and all of that. It's two pumps. It's two little DC pumps, and those pumps are DC for a reason. Uh, when I, I'm gonna, we're going to take a break in a minute, and then I'm going to do the power uh, conversation, but. Uh, the, the DC pumps are there DC because if you take everything, normally electricians, uh, solar designers will tell you, just invert everything to AC and use all AC stuff just like a conventional house. Well then if your inverter ever goes on a blink or fries a circuit or whatever, your whole house is down. What we do is we make the water pumps, which are very cheap and DC, the refrigeration and some lights be DC so that if your inverter fries, you still have a life. You can still turn your faucets on, you can still flush your toilet, you can still have uh, ice, 
and you can still have some light. We only use AC for computers and TVs and things like that and some lamps and appliances. But we make the function of the house go bypass the inverter straight with DC. So that's why there's two little DC pumps. You'll see them. Every house has got a water, a gray water board. It's just a littler version of the, of the fresh water board. It's a little green board that has a filter and a pump and a charcoal filter. And if you want to know where it is in each house, just flush the toilet. You'll hear it humming somewhere and follow the sound. Uh, the gray water, the, the fresh water boards are usually in the back hallways. In the Phoenix, uh, we always respond to whatever. Some people have, in fact, complained about the, the hum of the pump when you flush the toilet. So we got them out in the greenhouses a lot, but at the Phoenix, we've even got that disappeared. So there's no hum of a pump when you flush the toilet there. Uh, but there is a hum of a pump on the water when it builds up the pressure tank, but it's in a back hallway and you can hardly hear it. Uh, any other water? Yeah. With the flat water stoves, if you put them in a greenhouse, is there any like code issues with taking flat water back inside? Not if they don't know it. <laughs> <laughs> well, what we do is we call it exterior. Like what we did at the Phoenix was we did it exterior, and then we built a greenhouse over it. Right. So you can, it, you can, and basically you call that greenhouse an exterior greenhouse. It's not part of the house. You, you're just sheltering. The rationale is you're sheltering the plants from either rain or cold weather so that they can grow year-round. And so you, would, you may, in the worst scenario, you may have to re uh, remove it from the house a little bit, uh, and then it doesn't work as a buffer zone. There is no smell. No, it's all, it's sealed, see? That gray water that's in that gravel is sealed by a foot of dirt. And even, you can stick your nose down the pipes. We have observation stems everywhere. Yeah. No, There's no smell. No, nope. there's just no smell. Uh, so it's like, uh, it's definitely, you know, the people will uh, uh, get into, what do they call them? Uh, I mean, there's, there's people that are paranoid of any aspect of this because of uh, even the transpiration, the water that comes up through the plant roots and gets on the leaves. Uh, I forget what they call them pathogens and things they say that could get through, but we've never found it. Uh, you know, in other words, compared to what you face in a city with, you know, give me a pathogen or two, I'll take it any day. Yeah. Is it Nah, you can use everything. The only thing you don't want to do is you don't want to pour photography chemicals or turpentine down your drain or anything like that, but you can use any of the soaps. Any, it's, it's real easy. It's, uh, it's not uh, some kind of super organic rocket science thing. It's just, just don't put paint thinner down your drain. It's about all you have to remember. Yeah? With the uh, double greenhouse over the black water system, have you had it encountered anything with the community with that amount of heat coming into it and the plants that are... We like it here in this climate. Yeah, you get humidity. We, you, we get rid of the humidity as much as we want by ventilation and convection driven ventilation in the greenhouse but like at the phoenix i like to close it all up and it's like and you walk off the dry mesa into the phoenix and you're like walking into a rainforest it's great so we haven't considered humidity as a problem uh but we've experienced it and we you know humidity is good in this climate in a in a wetter climate you'd want to vent that humidity out uh to some extent at least in the living spaces like in a wetter climate you may put all the planting out in the greenhouses and not in the living spaces so that you can vent them separately and keep your humidity trapped for the plants. So knowing the principles of all this, then you, you do have choices of how you're going to set it up. But you know what's going on and you know the rationale for how to set it up. Yeah? What about toothpaste? Does toothpaste build up in the gray water system? No, it's like soap. It breaks down. And, and plants like all that stuff. They, they, all that provides nutrients for the plants. They like gray water better than fresh water. Yeah? Do you foresee things having to be replaced in 10, 15, 20 years? Well, I don't know what it would be. Pumps, maybe. Uh, filters. Peat moss. Uh, the peat moss filter, they, the way I had it explained to me by the health officials, that's why I started using one, is that you never have to replace it. It just gets better. It's organic. It's an organic filter that just gets, keeps getting more and more organic. 
and becomes a better filter and a better filter. Uh, so it actually reduces, what they say is it reduces the nitrate loading of the water. Uh, and when you test the water, it does have low nitrate loading. Um, you were saying maybe after 10, 15 years, you'd have to dig up parts of your greenhouse because it becomes root-bound. Is that just that top one-foot layer of dirt, or are you actually digging down into your dead water system at that point? Well, uh, it actually, the, we haven't dug one up because of root-bound. Uh, so uh, the more roots, the better it's going to work. I mean, I've had people build these, uh, as per our drawings, say, in Colorado, call me up a couple months later and say, this thing's not working. It's all saturated. And I said, well, what kind of plants you got in? And they said, well, we haven't planted it yet. <laughs> well, <laughs> the plants are the system. You know, right. the, you know the, you can, this is not just a reservoir to hold water. It's a place to hold plants because plants eat water. And so the more roots, the better. No root-bound issues uh, it, so far have we seen. Anything else? Let's t yeah. Oh yeah, I should mention that real quick, and then we'll take a break, and then we'll do electricity, and then the tour. Uh, there are what you do with these greenhouses, these botanical cells, is um, you start them with hardy plants that are more bomber and strong, especially with gray water, they even get stronger. I've got a list of them in the Water from the Sky book, but it's like. Bananas, for sure. Bougainvillea. Uh, all the geranium family, all the wandering Jew family, aloe. Uh, these plants up here are the ones. Uh, philodendron, uh, grapes. All of those kind of plants, all the Jew ground covers, uh, they, don't, they tend not to get bugs anyway. And they tend to grow fast. They tend to be hardy. So what you do is you just get, if you notice, the buildings, lots of them that you're going to see, aren't finished. And they're all full of these kind of plants. And because we plant them, the crew trumps on some of them even. But we just want to get the planter established because it is the sewage system. And we, we put plants out there just struggling to survive with the crew dragging uh, cords and tools through and everything. But the plants get in there and get established. And you get the whole thing covered with plants. The jade plant's a good one. Uh, and that starts the sewage eating process. Then, after you got your sewage being eaten after a few months, then you go in and you carve out a little place and you stick in a rose. And the roses do great, but not all by themselves. They like to be surrounded by companion planting or whatever. Tomatoes, if you filled your whole greenhouse with tomatoes, why, you'd have white flies. We get plenty of volunteer tomatoes and pot plants in our uh, planters <laughs> because the crew sits on the planters and eat lunch and uh, whatever. <laughs> But they, uh, so we get all these volunteer plants coming up, and then we don't notice it until somebody's in there and whatever. Hopefully, it's not a state official. But uh, the, uh, you carve out and put in food then, and cantaloupes, and all. If you just started the whole thing with food, you'd have bugs. You, you must have these strong, uh, hardy plants that, that are resistant to bugs as the basis. And then you place the foods and the flowers in between. And I've eaten it from the Phoenix. I've eaten sweet corn. You know, I would go over there in, uh, at lunch and graze. I eat carrots. I eat tomatoes. Now I eat tilapia, corn, bananas, uh, grapes, uh, watermelon, uh, everything. I mean, I just graze from the Phoenix uh, grocery store. Yeah. We have a pineapple growing over there. Or uh, citrus. What about like trees? So you can grow like citrus trees. Or yep. Citrus we have uh, a tangerine tree in the Phoenix is the biggest one. We got a grapefruit, lime, huh? Yeah. Figs. Can you grow figs? We got a fig tree growing in the Phoenix. Oh, I love you. <laughs> so uh, you can just grow. We, and you know we're trying to find out what you can't grow, but so far, you know everything. I mean that's why what. So what we're doing is when you see the Phoenix, if you haven't seen it you'll see why it has inspired us to do what we're doing with this EVE project, the building you were working on here this yesterday. We're hooking a greenhouse onto this building, going across in front of the two tower buildings, across the architect's office where you were pounding tires, onto the next rental units. It's going to be you know, a huge Amazon jungle greenhouse to produce food because we're we seeing that, that we can survive. You know, 25 people can survive here. We don't need power. We don't need water. We don't need sewage 
uh, lines. Uh, we don't need grocery stores. We can live. And that is freedom. We need, we need some masala.